Hey Band Network Leadership Series. Welcome to the Hey Band Network Leadership Series. Today we have a really special guest um, from San Antonio. Um, he's originally started teaching in New York and then taught at Bowie Middle School in Irving and has taught at Hebron High School up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, MacArthur High School in San Antonio and Eastview. And now he is an associate band director at Ronald Reagan High School, one of the fantastic programs in the country. Uh, Mr. Mason Daphne, welcome. Hey, Chad. Great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us on the Hey Band Network. So um, before we dig into the leadership side of how the Ronald Reagan High School band works, um, let's tell everybody a little bit about the program um, and the makeup and the ensembles and the students there. Sure. Um, Ronald Reagan High School is on the north side of San Antonio. It's a high school that has about 3,400 kids overall in the high school. The band programs, you know, around 320, including color guard, percussion, and winds. We have four audition-based concert bands, two jazz bands, a pretty active percussion studio that has a lot of percussion ensembles, including steel drums, super active um, uh, solo, and a uh, concert solo culture also. Um, we have multiple chamber ensembles that are really, really active on a national level. They, they love, um, we love our chamber music. Um, we have three ability-based winter guards. We, of course, have our marching band. Uh, and all in all, um, you know, it, I think I said earlier, 320 kids, but we also have an extra contingent of dancers who will join us for the marching season, which usually take us up to about 350. Awesome. And those that have followed the BOA scene, the Texas band is one of the state finalists and super regional uh, finalists and, and winner and, and just outstanding, outstanding band. Um, and I think they've done stuff um, on, the, on the concert band side of a lot of, a lot of stuff also with the groups. Yeah, the, the wind ensemble recently played at Midwest, uh, usually really successful in the honor band stuff. We just we love playing really great music and the kids really, really enjoy it. Um, as we all know, in order to make these things work, uh, it takes a great team. So uh, talk about the staff there at Ronald Reagan High School. Uh, sure. The, the first thing I'll say is we've had pretty much the same staff for the last five years. Um, five years ago, when I came to Reagan, it was because the person that was kind of in my position got moved to the head director, and so that's Dan Morrison. So he oversees all aspects of the band program, runs the wind ensemble, uh, runs the marching band. He does a great job with that. Uh, and then the other district employee uh, on the staff with me is Greg White. Uh, Greg is a woodwind kind of aficionado, and my expertise is more brass, so we kind of divide and conquer the workload that way. Uh, he and I both team teach the second band, and then we both have an equally distributed third band uh, that he has one group and I have the other. We kind of take the concert band and divide it in half, and so we make two uh, concert ensembles at the concert level. Uh, then we have um, some additional staff. Uh, we have a percussion specialist, Ray Uliberry, who kind of oversees all of the percussion studio activities. And we have two uh, guard directors, Noel Gabrantina and Ty Keem Rainey, who are just outstanding, who kind of lead our color guard program. And then you have uh, some additional staff. We have a, a gentleman named John Merritt who teaches all of our percussion lessons. And he really is a right-hand guy with all of our percussion activities. Uh, and then we have two additional uh, guard staff members, Kayla Cruz, who's a, a Reagan alum, and also someone named Mariah Sutton, who's local to San Antonio. And then, of course, private lesson staff, who, who are just so many, uh, there's so many really talented people that are around to help us out with that. But that's kind of our, our staffing situation at Reagan. Cool. Well, it's working uh, for yeah. what the band's getting done. So kudos to all Thanks. those people and, and, and your work. So tell us about the leadership program at Ronald Reagan High School. Uh, yeah. Um, the way we structure leadership is we kind of have four different leadership tracks. We have um, our officers, which kind of have this global responsibility through the entire year. Then we have our drum majors who their roles and responsibilities deal a little bit more with marching band specific things. Then we have our line leaders, which are kind of the boots on the ground folks, uh, really involved in marching band, but we use them a little bit during the concert season as needed. And then we have our crews, and our crews are basically the, the people who may not want to fill a specific line leader or captain or drum major or officer role, but they want to contribute in some way. So they'll help us set up marching band fields. They'll help copy music. They'll help with uniforms. So we kind of have um, a couple of different avenues that people can pursue if they want to be 
if they want to help and serve as a leader. So tell us how you've got several tracks. So tell us how each of those break down with uh, your your officers, your drum majors. How do we get to those positions? Sure. Um, starting with our officers, we kind of have what we call our band president, and they just kind of oversee typical band president things. It's more of an organizational throughout the year. They'll help out with the band banquet. They'll be the ones that'll speak and you know, speak at concerts. They'll be the ones that anytime there's a band specific event where you need, or an event in the public that you need a band representative for, they are kind of the face of the program. Uh, so it's important that they can represent themselves well, that they love the band because we want them to be able to genuinely express how they feel and represent the program in a positive light. Uh, then we have what we call vice presidents, but it's really just their kind of, their crew head. So we have a vice president. And some of these, these titles are going to sound a little bit, um, a little bit uh, grandiose, but they're just kind of ways to, to summer. They're kind of ways to describe how the job description is. Um, so we have vice president of aesthetics, but that's really just uniform stuff. So they take care of the uniforms. They take care of cleaning up the band hall about making sure that everything looks right. So it feels like a really healthy and productive organization, healthy and productive place to be. Uh, we have our vice president of logistics, which is, you know, basically they take care of all the equipment. They make sure that marching band rehearsals are set up for, and they make sure that if there's equipment that needs to be moved for concerts, they're the ones that we coordinate all of that stuff with. We have someone who handles a lot of recruitment and um, uh, recruitment materials. So we call it public relations and uh, recruitment. We have someone who is involved with uh, obviously the music librarians. So we have a vice president of, you know, we have a vice president for music librarians. So it's, it's those type of roles that we know the organi organization needs filled. And it's someone who probably needs to have a little bit of an administrative uh, vocabulary so they can work with other people and help other people accomplish the tasks that the band needs to get done. Uh, then we of course have our drum majors who kind of lead the band doing drum major things. So that's, you know, administrative and organizational and logistical, all primarily during the marching band season. And then um, we have our line leaders, which really end up being the boots on the ground people who during the course of our mini camp and our summer camp and marching band, they're the ones who really help us teach and help us monitor things. And, and there are a lot of different little roles that we use them to play, um, you know, because they're the first people who know if something's going wrong or something going right. So they really kind of help us keep our, our fingers on the pulse of the program. And then we have our crews who really just, they, they, service, they service the program in different ways because I mean, we have our, we call them SCORE, Student Care of Rake and Equipment, you know, a fun little acronym. And they're the ones to, if there's a music stand that's not where it's supposed to be, you take care of the equipment. If there are chairs that need to be put up, you take care of the equipment. If podiums need to be set out for rehearsals, you take care of the equipment. Then we have our aesthetics crew who work with that particular vice president who makes sure that the band hall is neat and clean and they take care of the uniforms because when you have that many people and you want to make them last as long as you can, then you try and take care of that stuff. Um, then of course our librarians who help out and help distribute the music library, the, the music for the program. So I, I think that what we try and do is we try and create an organizational structure for our leaders that expands to accept as many people as we possibly can have whether it's by functioning on a higher end administrative level like an officer who's functioning more as a musical leader uh, and a behind the scenes worker like a drum major, whether it's someone who's actually gonna be a little bit of an instructional component um, like a line leader or whether it's someone who really just wants to find a place to serve and maybe they don't want the limelight but they know that they wanna help and that's where the crew folks kind of play, in, play a role. Wow, that's a lot of, a lot of responsibilities for kids um, and that you yeah. all provide. How many students do you have uh, involved on a normal year in these these roles? You know, I think that's a little bit of a tough question to answer, and I'm not trying to be cagey. It's just uh, when we start the leadership process, um, we cast as wide a net as we possibly can. And so we tell everybody, if you think that at some point in your high school career, you might want to be a leader, you should sign up to start the leadership process now because you're going to get exposure to it. So even if you don't take it, because obviously we have prerequisites that, that kind of emerge as the dominant traits for anyone who's gonna get a role. You know, if you're a freshman and you think when you're a senior, you might wanna be a drum major, go out for the drum major class and start learning those skills now. And so 
we kind of cast this really wide net. And then as it starts to filter down to the people who are going to play those roles, then our crews start to get populated with a lot of these people who started the process but may not have finished it out because they were either too young or they decided it wasn't what they wanted to do. So I, mean, I think on average, we kind of start with about 100 kids who want to be a part of the leadership process. And then, you know, it whittles down depending on how big a section is to how many line leaders we can have for the and it kind of whittles down to, you know, we have two kids that would be great for president. Maybe we take them both this year. So it, I think on average, if I had to guess, we'd probably try, we probably have around 70 to, to 80. But if we can do more, we get more. Very cool. And how do they get into those roles? How do you, what is your process to get them into those positions? Sure. Um, well, actually, we, uh, it usually starts for us with drum major tryouts because that's the one that we, we try and develop the most. And if you're interested in being a drum major, you're probably going to be interested in all the other roles. So it, it kind of starts there. And so I'll describe that first. Um, our drum major process is a little bit different in the sense that we don't advertise it as drum major tryouts. We advertise it as a leadership class from which you will get skills that the drum majors would eventually use. And from that leadership class, we then create this filtering process that chooses our drum major. So we start with as many people as we can. This year we actually started with 60 and we included like color guard, drum line, everybody, freshmen, sophomores, anyone who wants to take the class, we, we try and get them in. And we have um, three sessions where we basically learn just fundamental conducting skills. We start talking about leadership because the, the thing that we're really doing is we're trying to imprint on them that they are the core leadership team. Whether or not they end up getting a title, they're the ones who obviously want the band to be better, otherwise they wouldn't be here. And so those are the people that ultimately play a role in making the band a better place. So whether or not they get a title is kind of a secondary factor. It's the people who want to serve are the ones that make the band better. You want to serve. So we're going to start breathing this leadership stuff and, and serving ideas into you. So that way, wherever you end up, you are more equipped to do that. So we kind of do three sessions where it's basic leadership skills um, and conversations and a lot of social, a lot of uh, relationship building, because especially in leadership stuff, one of the double-edged swords is that you only have so many spaces for people. You know, we are going to choose four candidates out of that initial pool of 60. So what's more important is that they understand that they're actually a team from day one. So when you get to the final day and you're talking about who the candidates are, they can be excited for the drum majors who are selected, as opposed to feeling hurt and damaged along the way that they don't feel like they, they had a chance to represent themselves. Well. So it's a lot of leadership building and then, or sorry, relationship building. And then we do a first round audition. And that's the point where anyone who's not really serious about going on to the second round of our drum major tryouts, that's where we have a conversation. And we're like, okay, is this something you really wanna do? No, I just kinda wanted to get a little bit out. Or, hey, I'm a freshman. I I'm probably not gonna you know, continue on this year, maybe when I'm a junior. And so you know, people will put in their audition materials. And then we select a number of finalists to go on this year. We actually selected, I think, 16 or 17 finalists to move on. And the cool thing about that is, is we, again, view it as a leadership class out of which we'll take our drum majors because we even had a couple of freshmen that were in there because we want them to start gaining these skills. So when they're on the field as a sophomore and they're able to start thinking and watching what the drum majors are really doing, it's with this whole new lens because they're appreciating the behind the scenes stuff that they might have missed before because we talked about it already once. And so, you know, at that round, we again talk about more leadership stuff. We have some more conducting stuff that we have them do. Uh, and then we also, um, ask them to submit essays. And in a normal year, we do in-person interviews and in-person teaching, but of course you have to modify that a little bit. And then out of that, you kind of, oh, and the one extra step I will say that we do is we take the peer, we take um, what the kids think in the program pretty seriously. And so peer review is a really important part of the process. We structure it in a way where we get the information that is valuable in making these decisions so it's not a popularity contest. We tailor the questions in a way that, that allows them to think about what's gonna make the band a better place. So that way it's not, well, I like this person and I don't like this person. It's like, well, how do you think the integrity of this person is going to contribute to the, the quality of the band program? And then from that, we select our drum major. So that's kind of the first step. And then from there, we, we choose our line leaders and we use our line leaders to help with even recruiting and relationship building primarily. So we use them to, part of the audition process is how we relate and reach out to the middle school kids. And we actually, we had to modify and adapt that this year because of the, obviously the online learning. But 
relationship building is a really important part of what they're doing as well, because, you know, they figure out the math with this many trumpets, we're only going to have this many line leaders, but there are twice as many candidates as what we have for positions. So you're trying to build an environment that if they don't get the position, they can be excited and supportive of the people who did. And if they get the position, they're going to be understanding and aware and gracious to the people who did. So that's kind of how the line leaders get selected. For our officer positions, it's a little more like a straight up voting system, but we use the voting of the kids and we blend it with the example the kids, the candidates have already been setting. And then the crews are just kind of volunteer based. Sorry, that's a lot of talking. I just didn't make sure. Yeah, I no, but it's, I, it's intriguing because you're, you, you all have a definite system set up that you believe in and and I think one of the, the neatest part is it's a leadership building, no matter who you are and what grade you're in. You're giving tons of kids opportunities to begin the process, whatever that means on the end product. And I think that's a, um, a nice perspective for people to see and, and see that there's a, a different way to do that. And maybe this is a route someone else would want to explore and look into and, and how to get to their student leaders uh, mm -hmm. for that. So how many of those, so you mentioned the drum majors go through a pretty lengthy process to get there. Um, do the others have to go through an interview on that part, part also, or is it mainly just the drum majors and then they kind of, as they fill those positions in? Well, for the drum majors, with the drum major finalists is what we call them, they'll all go through an interview. Uh, we actually just did those today with ours. And so we had, um, our, we had a two hour window where we sat on Zoom and we'd invite them in from the waiting room and we'd give them an opportunity to talk to us about, you know, what band means to them, why they want to serve what their mission statement would be, who are the people that they would choose if they could choose other drum majors to be their teammates. Cause I mean, those kids are super perceptive and they, their input is always, you know, pretty spot on. Uh, so that's definitely a part of the process. Cool. Um, so once you have them, um, once you have them in the leader positions, what's your training process? Is there more training after this or is that kind of it that you all do with them? Um, we, I think we do a lot of relationship building still, or we use that and prepare them for it with a couple of, you know, get togethers ahead of time in a regular year. Um, and then as the school year ends and we get ready to start back up, we would do a couple of days with Sassy. Uh, all of the, the Reagan staff members are Sassy folks. And so that's definitely something we believe in. And so we, we definitely participate in that part of the, the leadership building process. And then from there, it kind of depends on the section. You know, like I work a lot with the line leaders because we use them to instruct. And then the percussion directors will work a lot with the percussion leaders and the guard cap. The guard directors will work a lot with the guard captains. So it's, you know, there's a couple of macro events, but it's mostly on a smaller micro level. And then since we're in some strange times, you mentioned you did auditions already today. Was it today or yesterday? Yeah, drum major stuff today. So you did drum major auditions, um, I'm guessing virtually through that. Um, what challenges did you have to go through? Because I know a lot of people are just now getting into this process. Yeah, well, the first thing I'd say is that if someone's just getting into the process, they in no way are behind the times. It just so happens that we started uh, spring break the week before they started to close all the schools. And that's typically the time where I start plugging everything into the calendar. So I had already built the schedule at that point in time. And so when they kind of changed it up, it's like, well, okay, well, this is this was gonna happen anyways, so let's just continue the process. Um, I think a couple of the things that we had to really think about is what did the kids get out of this process that was really important? So what do we need to find ways to keep? Find ways to keep, yeah. And then what what are some of the things that might've been circumstantial that we did because proximity allowed it to happen? that we probably don't need to focus on as much. Um, for our, for example, for our line leaders, one of the things that was really important was we used them to teach our new members when we would go to the new middle schools for that. Well, it's like, well, if it's gonna be done in a digital age, okay, part of their, part of their audition process, they need to make instructional videos on different skills. And so we would make that part of our, our Zoom sessions talking about how they would do that so they could still submit those. So as we're getting ready to talk to all the middle school kids, we can, you know, send those videos out and say, these are the kinds of things that you're going to be doing. And, and the kids are still a part of that process. Um, also, you know, kids are the best advertisements for the program when they really believe it has value. And so 
one of the things we wanted to continue to use them for was their power of the testimonial. And so we actually had the kids, we gave them a list of questions and said, these are some frequently asked questions from middle school kids. How would you answer those? And so instead of having interviews with all of these line leader candidates, they submitted these testimonials as to what made band significant to them. And you know, some of the kids, it was crazy because I think of one kid in particular who to this date, I don't know if I've ever heard her speak in band because she's so shy and she's terrified of being in front of other people. But you put her in her, you put her at home where she puts up her, her phone and she talks about how important band is to her because it's how, her, how it's changed her life. It's allowed her to feel more comfortable around other people. And it's such a powerful statement of the value of band that when we show middle school kids, like you're not going to help but be affected by that. So it's kind of a, these are the things that you helped us with. These are the ways that we're evaluating how you can best serve the program. And so finding ways to fuse those has been kind of a fun challenge. That's cool. Very, very cool. And it's different. It'd be interesting what we take from this long term. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said. All right. So you've trained your kids. You've, you've got them selected. You've trained them. What steps do you do when you start summer band um, in terms of responsibilities for your student leaders? Um, for the officers, it's a little more organizational because we'll just kind of meet with them maybe once a week and talk about, okay, these are the theme days for band to try and make the experience a little more enjoyable for everyone and make it feel like it's a little bit more of an organization. Uh, you know, especially because you're segmented a lot when you start summer band. Guards over there, drums are over there, winds are over here. Um, with the drum majors, they're obviously just trying to make the show go. And so there's, you know, a lot of um, work that they're doing just to make sure that equipment's ready, making sure they understand what the responsibilities are and how best to make, how, how, how best to help the directors facilitate rehearsal. Uh, with our line leaders and our captains, we use them a lot for instruction. Um, it, at least with the wind players, we set up, they're called line leaders because when we set up our fundamental block, the line leaders are in the front and they have the same group of kids that are assigned behind them and they're those kids are strategically placed so new members are in between stronger members and you know that way that teaching environment can be maximized even if it's just environmental factors and so frequently we'll be doing a marching fundamental and i'll say line leaders hop out and watch watch your folks and they'll go back and forth down the line giving specific feedback um, to those kids and then we'll do an, an instruction and I'll be like okay line leaders you guys have two minutes and they'll quickly run off to their different parts of the field and they have two minutes to practice that one skill because you know the energy is so different when you get multiple people who are leading rehearsal you get different buy and when it's when you're one in 200 it's a different energy level than when you're one in eight and so especially during the beginning of summer band those line leaders are pivotal in the instruction of fundamentals and then, you know, once you get into the show, the line leaders really just kind of, we use them by setting the example, you know, and that's kind of their main role. But that's kind of, you know, and one thing, one extra thing I'll say, and I should never underestimate the value of this, kids work harder when they like band. And so I'm very much a task oriented person. And it took me such a long time to really get comfortable with the idea that the best thing that we can do sometimes is give them social time where they can go hang out underneath the trees and just play silly games and get used to each other and get to know each other better because that makes people more comfortable and when they're more comfortable they work better together once you get into marching season is there anything that you ask your leaders maybe on a football game day on a contest day anything of those sorts that that they do besides just your teaching the stuff you've gone through uh, that's mostly officers and crew folks because they help parents kind of get uh, materials where they need to be. Um, uh, the line leaders really just help us keep everything moving and keep their eyes open to make sure that fresh, especially, you know, picture your first football game. Uh, those line leaders are the ones that help usher the freshmen through the process of getting your uniform, through putting it on, through finding your instrument, through refining your instrument because you lost it when you went to go put your uniform on. You know, they're the ones who just kind of help with those little things so that way kids can, the kids can be a little more autonomous. That's cool. And then when the season's over, what kind of responsibilities? You mentioned some that the officers kind of carry through. Are there responsibilities that kids have from a leadership standpoint after football season? Yeah, um, I think that the responsibility remains in the sense that once you're a leader, you're expected to act in a way 
that exemplifies how we want everyone to act over the course of the year. So there's the accountability level, I think for them is just expected to be a little bit higher. So as far as that, their role is to be exemplary. Um, as far as specific duties, um, it has more to do with what the officers do to help structure and plan events and help with more macro band program things uh, than kind of the smaller day-to-day -day stuff. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, what, what you and Mr. Morrison and Mr. White and yourself all do there is, is some really great work. Um, Thanks. And, and laid out and how you've got it laid out, I think is very helpful um, for anybody watching and, and listening into this and how do they do things on the leadership side at Ronald Reagan High School. Um, just real impressive to hear you guys talk, hear you talk about it uh, for that. Um, do you have any shout outs you want to give? Uh, you know, I guess I would give one, of course, to my wife because she is an Air Force musician and the Air Force Band of the West has been putting out a ton of digital content. So if you're looking for stuff to share with your uh, with your band communities, check out the Air Force Band uh, Facebook page. They have tons of stuff that's gone out recently. It's, it's really cool. And I get to hear my wife working on it at home and they're just top notch people and top notch musicians. So it's been fun to watch them adapt to their new normal as well. Uh, also Sassy, the leadership people, because you know we work with them and believe a lot in what they're doing. And if people aren't sure where to start, uh, they are doing a lot of digital leadership sessions. So you can actually do that virtually if you're not sure how you want to proceed in this kind of new normal that we're, we're adapting to. Very cool. And then any last words of wisdom you have for everyone? I'm not so sure they're words of wisdom, but they're things that we have kind of guided our thinking a little bit. Um, find ways for people to serve where they are. One of our requirements for leadership consideration was that they had to do a personal project at home that they couldn't tell their parents about. And so some of the kids said that they were gonna do dishes, some kids said they were gonna walk the dogs more regularly, like whatever it was, there's obviously a need that you can meet wherever you are. And so if you instill that at home now, it, there's a greater likelihood that it will follow them back to the band hall. Uh, and then the other thing is, um, and it kind of builds off that, leaders are at their best when they are filling a need. And we've been telling our kids, since we don't know what it's gonna look like when we come back, the best thing you can do is just be prepared to see a need and meet it. Because that's what teachers are doing right now. Like we're all seeing different needs from our kids and our communities and we're trying as best we can to meet that. And so that's a really good example for us to not just set, but also to remember when we get back to whatever it is we're getting back to. Uh, that's great advice and a great idea for you all to present to your students and um, serving bigger than just helping at home, but also making a bigger service uh, purpose down the road to, uh, to help your program. Very cool. Uh, Mason Daphne, thank you very much for joining the Hay Band Network today. Thanks for having me, Chad. It was a pleasure. It's great. Um, and to listen to you uh, talk about what you all do at Ronald Reagan High School um, and how you run the leadership program. And I know you have a lot to do with that and, and with the team that's involved there. It's just another, um, another explanation why some of the success of that program is just things are taken care of and, and how you talk about it is great. And hopefully it's something that a lot of people watching can get, get some ideas out of how to improve your own leadership program or steal and take some things to improve their, their program at their school. So, um, but again, thank you very much for joining the Hay Band Network uh, Leadership Series. Uh, those that are watching, if you made it this far, if you'd like to, check out other videos in our series, check out the Hey Band Network YouTube channel, subscribe and like that video. Thank you very much, Mason Daphne. Thanks, Chad.